Orcs are a staple of fantasy. Whether they're serving the role of fearsome but nameless foot soldiers of evil that heroes can skewer by the dozen, or in more recent works like Warcraft, misunderstood humanoids who generally just want to live their lives like anyone else, but occasionally get a little too high on violence and warfare. I'm looking at you, Garrosh. Orcs in their various forms are found in many of today's biggest fantasy properties, like Warcraft, Warhammer, The Elder Scrolls, Dungeons and Dragons, and of course the Lord of the Rings. It's from J.R.R. Tolkien's epic that the modern concept of the Orc has been formed, modified as needed by later lore masters, but what was Tolkien's inspiration? In terms of his own lore, even Tolkien wasn't totally certain where orcs came from, offering a few different explanations for their in-universe origins. And I'm not going to get into the differences between orcs and goblins and uruks, and all the separate variations of things that could be called orcs. The real history of orcs is just as murky, but I'll take a look at what we do know, and the concepts that may have led to one of fantasy's most ubiquitous creations. Let's start with J.R.R. Tolkien and work backwards from there. How did he come up with orcs? The answer to that is really pretty simple, as he wrote about it in one of his letters. The word is, as far as I am concerned, actually derived from Old English orc demon, but only because of its phonetic suitability. They are not based on direct experience of mine, but owe, I suppose, a good deal to the goblin tradition. Goblin is used as a translation in The Hobbit, where orc only occurs once, I think. Especially as it appears in George MacDonald, except for the soft feet, which I never believed in. Despite saying that orcs were not based on his direct experience, Tolkien, a veteran of World War I, wrote to his son Christopher when he was serving in World War II, saying that both sides of the war featured, quote, a motley alliance of orcs, beasts, demons, plain naturally honest men and angels. Also of note is The New Shadow, the little known work set a hundred years after the War of the Ring that Tolkien attempted to write in his later years. It would have featured young men of Gondor joining orc cults as a form of rebellion. So Tolkien was well aware of the capacity for humans, both real and fictional, to exhibit orcish behavior, namely wanton evil and destruction. But while that may have accounted for the personalities of orcs, what about their physical forms? In that letter, Tolkien mentioned Jordan MacDonald's goblins and something about their soft feet. That's a reference to The Princess and the Goblin, a children's fantasy novel published in 1872 that features, well, a princess and quite a lot of goblins. Their one weakness is those soft feet, whom the boy hero of the novel stomps with abandon whenever he needs to fight them. I guess we should be thankful that Tolkien didn't go with that idea. The battles in the Lord of the Rings books and movies would have been a lot less thrilling if all the good guys had to do was step on the orc's toes. Tolkien's influences go back much farther than the 19th century. As he said in that letter, orc comes from the Old English word for demon. He specifically refers to Beowulf, the epic Anglo-Saxon poem written over a thousand years ago, which includes the lines, Thence all evil broods were born, ogres and elves and evil spirits. Note the word orkneus corresponding to evil spirits in the translation. It's also been translated as demon corpses, revenants, or other nefarious things. Tolkien also uses the phrase hell devil and its Old English counterpart as a reference to orcs. Notably, a Latin to Old English glossary dating to the 10th century has an entry for Orcus, which includes the word Hell Devil. So who or what exactly was Orcus? In Dungeons and Dragons, Orcus is the demon prince of the undead and one of the most powerful and evil beings in the multiverse. That interpretation is most likely derived from Orcus, the Roman god of the underworld, who specifically represented the aspect of punishment for the dead. The Romans also used the name to refer to the underworld or Hell itself. Naturally, that's something to be feared, which made it the perfect ancestor of the evil spirits of Beowulf's Orkneus, or Tolkien's orcs. German language scholar and Beowulf translator Friedrich Kleber believed that Orkneus was directly derived from Orcus, but another Beowulf translator disagreed. That was Tolkien himself, who said in a letter to science fiction writer Gene Wolfe, Orc I derive from Anglo-Saxon, a word meaning demon, usually supposed to be derived from the Latin Orcus, hell. But I doubt this, though the matter is too involved to set out here. In any event, there is one amazing thing to take from all this. That Tolkien would exchange letters with random fans, which Wolf was at the time. Social media has made celebrities more accessible today, but Tolkien was basically tweeting at his fans around 60 years ago. Alright, let's step away from Tolkien and his direct influences and take a look at other uses of orc and similar words in literature. William Blake, writing in the late 1700s, includes in his works a character named Orc, 
who represents rebellion and change, fitting given that Blake was writing in the era of the American and French revolutions. This orc is described as having similarities to Lucifer, the rebellious fallen angel of the Bible, who is analogous to Morgoth, the rebellious fallen angel of the Lord of the Rings, who created orcs. Orcs as rebels or chaotic-leaning nonconformists or outsiders is a common theme in media, encompassing the orc cultists in the new shadow, as well as their presentation in games as an alternative to the more orthodox, good, and civilized races like humans, elves, and dwarves. Hairy, man-like creatures dwelling on the outskirts of civilization called Huerco feature in fairy tales by Italian writer Gian Battista Basile, who was active in the early 1600s. But the earliest known use occurred in Lodovico Ariosto's epic poem Orlando Furioso, written between 1516 and 1532. Here, the orc, spelled O-R-K-E, represents both a giant sea monster and later a blind man-eating giant, the latter description at least vaguely resembling the modern orc as a large and brutish savage. Outside of literature, there isn't really that much actual folklore surrounding orcs. Similar monsters like goblins are common enough, but for the most part the orc as we recognize it today seems to be a fairly modern invention. The one exception I could find was the mythology surrounding the orco among the Tyrol people who hail from the eastern Alpine mountains currently part of western Austria and northern Italy. Described as a huge and powerful mountain ghost, the Orko is a shapeshifter who, apart from that power, generally fits the concept of the modern Orc. He adopts every form and exercises his enormous strength only in destroying. Everything he does is for the terror and annoyance of mankind. He very seldom takes the human form, and when he does it is of gigantic stature with the most malevolent, wild, and cruel expression. He is then dressed in the manner of the giants, or quite naked, but covered thickly with hair like the coat of a bear. The book that description comes from relays several stories of encounters with wild and dangerous beasts, which the people swear must have been the Orko in one of its shapeshifted forms. So the Orko is, in a way, a kind of malevolent hell spirit, which harkens back to the old concept of the Anglo-Saxon Orkneys, which probably survived through the years to become the Orko or similar monsters in other cultures. Orc with an E is also often conflated with Ogre in older dictionaries, and it's easy to see how the two would share a linguistic heritage. Also, given its large and to some eyes monstrous appearance, the Orca, as in Killer Whale, might also be linguistically related to the Orc. But modern Orcs might also take some inspiration from another animal entirely. Orcs in early modern fantasy works were often depicted as being literally pig-headed. That trope still persists today in some media, and might be because, well... Orc rhymes with pork. That's right, orcs are the other white meat. Or maybe green meat. All in all, it's difficult to definitively pin down the exact origins of orcs, conflated as they are with other similar humanoid monsters and the relative lack of description in most historical literary sources. It's likely that the nebulous concept of hell devils and other evil creatures have been with us for thousands of years, and it's only in the last century or so, thanks largely to Tolkien, that the notion of the orc has crystallized into a commonly accepted image and behavior, though recent works have done more to redeem the orc as a kind of chaotic but not entirely evil outsider, harkening back beyond Tolkien to William Blake's rebel. The orc today is part Roman god, part rebellious spirit, and part alpine legend, with maybe a dash of the common pig. All that sounds like a pretty wicked recipe for crafting monsters. I wonder if that's what Saruman had in his cookbook. Thank you so much for watching this video about orcs. Feel free to like and share it, and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about it or what you'd like me to cover next. Till next time, may you always have a paladin or two on hand to deal with orc raids on your village.